CI this week. Today, we'll call this episode, The Crime. Illinois is no longer under any executive order issued by Governor Pritzker in regards to COVID-19. All restrictions on citizens and businesses are lifted. Masks are no longer required. Social distancing is not required. Restaurants can open to 100% indoor capacity without social distancing, and gatherings of over 50 people are legal. That is a fact, despite a lot of misinformation from the governor's office and the news media. I am going to detail the key information and link to the documentation in the description below if you are watching this program on YouTube. If you are watching this on Access 4 or UPTV6, visit tiny.cc slash pwci and look for episode 232. Judge Michael McHenry ruled on July the 2nd that Governor Pritzker did not have the legal authority under the Illinois Emergency Management Agency Act to extend disaster declarations beyond 30 days without approval from the Illinois General Assembly. That means Governor Pritzker either appeals the ruling to a higher court to argue for reinstatement, or he calls a special session of the Illinois GA to make an amendment to the IEMA giving him that power. The GA declined to do so when they assembled at the Prairie Capital Convention Center. There are four counts contested. The first one was denied summary judgment, requesting a written motion to be filed for hearing later. Counts two and three in favor of Bailey. The fourth was voluntarily dismissed. In count two, the court found the governor's proclamations were for the same disaster starting March the 9th and under existing state law expired April the 8th and were illegally extended. Under count three, the court declared the governor had no constitutional authority to restrict a citizen's movements or activities or forcibly close businesses and no cited provisions in IEMA gave him authority to do so. Those powers belong to the Department of Public Health under the Illinois Department of Public Health Act and the County Code. Bailey's request that his complaint be a representative action that applies to all citizens of the state of Illinois was granted. That means indoor wrestling events in the state of Illinois can be held as of today. Venues, however, are not rushing to return things to normal just yet. Though in neighboring states like Missouri, Wisconsin, and Indiana, indoor events have been held and more are upcoming. Before this ruling was issued, earlier in the day, a ruling by a federal court on Illinois GOP versus Pritzker, which people cite as a conflicting ruling in favor of Pritzker, incorrect. This suit did not deal with emergency, emergency powers under IEMA. This only dealt with whether the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution was violated by the EO limiting gatherings to 50 people. The federal court did not rule on whether the governor had the authority to issue that executive order. So the McHenry ruling rendered that ruling completely moot unless the EO gets reinstated. On the unresolved count one, where it was contested, repeated proclamations after the initial one did not meet the definition of a disaster, a hearing has been scheduled to dismiss the remaining count on July 17th. I do want to note that the AG, the Attorney General, tried to stall tactic, claiming Clay County could not legally hear the case until July the 6th because of a so-called 10-day rule, which was completely nonsense. This was uh, the transfer of the federal court back to state court. Thomas DeVore and Darren Bailey have stated following the ruling the executive order is no longer in force and they are desperately trying to make people think it's still active through threats and intimidation from the governor's office in which DeVore promises more lawsuits in response. The governor's spokespersons claim because the judge didn't rule on count one, therefore the ruling couldn't be appealed. Bailey contends he asked to dismiss the first count. The governor claims his phase four rules are still in effect despite the ruling, which is bogus. If a citizen or a business acts in defiance of the now void EO and law enforcement or a govern government agency seeks to punish such action, they would be proper for the person or business would seek an injunction to bar enforcement of the executive orders. Now, individual businesses are still acting as if the EOs are still in place. That is their choice. 
it is also my choice not to do business with anyone who demands I wear a useless mask. Any business that refuses to take cash and also refuses to give change for cash because they stupidly think they'll get sick touching money should be boycotted well after the pandemic is over. They have to learn to stop doing foolish things. And the only way they learn is by financial losses from losing most of their customers to the competition. I suggest strongly everyone read the transcript of the hearing and the ruling via the links I provide below. Until the decision is overturned by an appeals court, appellate court, there is no executive order in place. Anyone who tells you otherwise either didn't read the ruling, is clueless, or is deliberately lying to you. I would also strongly urge you to read the legal analysis from the Cecil Law Firm. I do want to slam the healthcare community for the reckless behavior such as, as the um, American Hospitals Health and Nurses Associations for issuing an open letter urging the public to wear masks to stop the spread of the virus. You should have issued a very strong rebuke to those nearly 1,300 healthcare professionals who signed a letter two months ago to not stop and actually encouraged protesting in large crowds despite repeated warnings that gathering in large crowds would cause a massive spike in cases. And yes, while a number of media outlets repeatedly denied the race protests spread COVID-19, officials in Miami, Los Angeles, and Seattle admitted it did contribute to increased numbers. Left-wing idiots are screaming about cases spiking upward and point to multiple states. The numbers are skyrocketing. The reason why that is happening is more people are staying indoors a lot more because it of triple digit heat outside. They're running their air conditioning, circling the same air inside their houses. But the death rate for COVID-19 is going down. Fewer new cases are serious or critical, but governors and mayors who stroke their egos issuing mandates to control people are using this as an excuse to force a nationwide mandate on masks wearing 24 seven, even inside their houses, and issuing fines in some places if they don't comply. And doing anything physical outside in the heat while being forced to wear a mask, I suspect we will be seeing more people collapsing and ending up in the hospital from heat exhaustion or even heat stroke from constantly breathing in hot air made hotter trapped in that mask. You know what heat stroke is? It's a condition caused by your body overheating, usually as a result of prolonged exposure to or physical exertion, high temperatures. I do want to note that China dropped the mask requirement when three students died while wearing masks in gym class running laps on a track. Early on in the pandemic, I know the story where a jogger also in China suffered a collapsed lung while running wearing a mask a couple of miles. The Illinois High School Association, State High School Association, is making a huge mistake if they force athletes to wear masks while playing sports. Because if anything like that happens here, they will be hit with a lot of wrongful death lawsuits. For the Karens and Daryls who are still waking up every single day, severely traumatized with terror over contracting this virus, you need to seek major psychological help. You are never going to be able to function in society again until you do. There's a lot of people who strongly suspect COVID-19 will no longer be concerned to a lot of elected leaders on Wednesday, November 4th, the day after Election Day, as there will no longer be any of the potential political gain from it, at least until 2022. Mark my words. However, it doesn't help that educated idiots such as Pavel Blogoff of Women College in uh, the state of Washington put out a completely asinine study claiming people who don't comply with social distancing guidelines have traits of a psychopath. Yes, this moron actually believes people like me want to murder a bunch of people because we don't want to fully comply with little tyrants and their sketchy COVID science that changes every week such as the Clown News Network's Elizabeth Cohen admitting 
Hydroxychloroquine actually helped COVID-19 patients after pushing to the moon a now discredited study published by The Lancet that claimed it would greatly harm heart health a couple of months ago. This goof blog off has dropped off, dropped over the internet since I imagine he was bombarded with very angry emails, as he should have been. The girl in this Now the latest update on Mo Elgin. Molly Chapman's attempt to extort money from the Tattoo Artist Committee community has gone down in flames. A nonprofit organization, Surviving STL, which is dealing with a Kyle Holker case, had to send its lawyers to explain to Mo why they couldn't just give her cash or a gift card in exchange screenshotted from her Facebook page. Despite demands to talk to those attorneys, Mo didn't respond, leading to its co-founder to respond to her public complaints, leading to a spat of whether Mo's personal situation was posted online. Meanwhile, she is claiming to have yet another medical condition to go along with all the others she's claimed to have. Now an underactive thyroid gland. She's claimed several other conditions and supposedly had her uterus removed multiple times. The saga continues. Michael Logan has recently posted a video to address other accusations made against him in the last decade that do not deal with Mo. He denied sexually assaulting a woman of whom he shared a bed with and with four other people in a room. He also addressed sending a photo of his privates to a female Canadian wrestler in 2016, which he apologized for and contends it was a photo of someone else's sent via his social media account. In the infamous Golden Shower story he told on the Kevin Steen slash Owens show, he says it is true, but all activities were consensual. I have shared a link to it in the description below. Also, in a footnote to Mo Elgin, the man known as Otis Idol, who was in that hotel room, re-emerged in comments on that video denying he sent an email to Drama Lama of Truth taking credit for the infamous Golden Shower story. A disclaimer on that. Unfortunately, there's no way to verify the commenter IDing himself as Otis Dolomite, actually, is indeed the actual person. But also, no way to verify the email that was sent to Drama Llama came from that individual as well. However, we are going to officially retract the claim that Otis Isle was the one who took credit for the Golden Showers story. In another story out of Indiana, while championship wrestling outlaws may be done after a show last weekend in which Jonathan Wolfe, who is accused of sexually assaulting multiple people, including one of his victims who was at the event, was booked on the show. Defiant on the charges against him, he told the locker room people had no right to stand up for the victims against him and plans to take his accusers to court, claiming they're lying. While I fully support the right to due process in facing the accuser guaranteed by the Sixth Amendment in the Bill of Rights and selling this in a court of law, this is a foolish move by its promoter Joey Owens, who's apparently Joe or Wolf's father but also has a past criminal record on similar charges. That left several people in a tough spot, but most wrestled the show anyway as a professional courtesy to the fans who came to see them and throw away the time and travel they put in the day they wouldn't get back. After the event, several people declared they were cutting all ties with the promotion and some of the folks who were set to appear on future dates have pulled out. If they ever run again, I suspect the entire card will be people who appeared on the PW Truth Project list. I've had this idea about uh, doing a satire piece on people who have been banned from the wrestling business, but mm, that will come another day. Now we will be taking a commercial break. We're going to take a look at this weekend's schedule.
As drivers, we make a million little choices each and every time we get behind the wheel. Choices like distracted driving, DUI, speeding, and no seatbelt are proven killers. But there's another threat lurking on your roadways that you need to consider. It's the choice by drivers to ignore the move over law. This lethal choice has led to the death of first responders from all over the state. Men and women sworn to serve and protect you, the people of Illinois. Slow down, move over, it's the law. Are you a fair or festival organizer? If you're thinking of adding pro wrestling to your event, it takes more than just a $5,000 ring. It takes credible talent with years of training, skill, and experience. It takes quality production values. It takes credible promoters with knowledge of the independent scene, the resources to set up entertaining cards, and how to get fans in the door. Bring in just anyone without vetting their credentials, you could wind up with an embarrassing disaster. The so-called talent may have no training, no ring gear, aren't family friendly, and some may even have a lengthy rap sheet. If you want live professional wrestling at your fair festival, don't get burned. Check their credentials before you book. A public service announcement from the St. Louis Wrestling Community. Visit our website, stlwrestling.livejournal.com. All right, in the final segment of the program, we're gonna flash back to March. Bruin Grand Pro, the Ryan Buckley Memorial Tournament, second round matchup. Mario Cravillo will be taking on a member of the Carnies Slash Team IOU, that would be Carrie Awful. This is a second round matchup. I guess we're gonna finish this tournament up and showcase the final in a future week. <laughs> Next week on the program, we will uh, Highlight two more members of the Central Illinois Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. It will be Rip Mystic taking on Tom Arson from Pro Wrestling Glory in 2013. That'll be next week on the program. This weekend is Wrestling for a Cure at the 8th Street Gym. It will be live streamed on their Facebook page. Wrestling for a Cure 17. They'll be accepting donations. You're wrong. Rob Leach said we wouldn't see a Kerry Awful return for this tournament, but obviously he's here holding his head after uh, taking a pile driver. And it hurt, kind of bugged him to have to say that, but too bad. He was, uh, of course, representing his man, Dan Liplock, at the same time as re-announcing this event. So it's one-on-one -on -one action, a former tag team champion at Proving Grand Pro, Mario Cravilla taking on Kerry Awful. This one-on-one -on -one matchup. The other show happening, well, our man, American Hostile Championship Wrestling will be running an event in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. That is the other show happening this weekend. It is a bit of a drive. Of course, the state of Illinois no longer under restrictions for the moment. It's just uh, getting, just a matter of uh, 
coaxing uh, businesses and companies to uh, realize there is no executive order despite the threats and the bravado of the governor. And Kerry Offal takes the sunglasses of Mario Cravel and is destroying them. Well, that's not cool. Taking your gimmick and destroying it. Fellow pulling a tantrum and here he comes! Carry awful! Sidesteps him and goes to work on Mario Cravillo, the merman. Charges in, kick to the face. Pulls the t shirt off and carry awful. Double chop to the back. Pretty much the shoulder blades. Break to the chest. Popular Bluff uh, is going to be at the Knights of Columbus Hall for AHCW. And the following weekend, IWA Productions holds its first event at their new facility in Mount Vernon, Illinois. Cover, two count. I will be there for that event. That door will be outside. Hopefully it doesn't rain. Hopefully it isn't too hot either. But they will uh, have the grand opening of their training facility in Mount Vernon. I do a productions and holding an event outside for the locals in Mount Vernon. Then New Way Pro will have its first event in a while in Terre Haute, Indiana. Since uh, Indiana is under less restrictions than Illinois at their uh, oh, geez, dojo at 1439 Ash Street. Danger. And into the crowd, these two men go. So I'm having to warn the audience to get out of the way, these two. Carry off has a chair. Carry off has another chair. He's trying to set up chairs, but. He's being assaulted and we got problems here. Trying to evacuate. Trying to evacuate people and uh, they can't get out of the way fast enough. Gravello chopping carry awful against the post and there's a super kick. And Cravello goes face first into the chairs. Carry awful. I don't know what he what is he up to here. Wait, don't get too close. Back up. Back up. No, get back, get back, get back, get back. That was a bad idea. Those two kids got dangerously close. If that move was reversed he would have been right into those kids so yeah give them give the wrestlers plenty of room for a reason oh gosh this could be very bad bad neck now a bad leg hip come on Gary my goodness Gotta give those wrestlers plenty of room because not anything can happen. Don't want the kids to get hurt. One of these bigger men just crash into them. Absolutely, that would be absolutely awful. Anyway, very awful trying to get back to his feet. Back in the ring, there is a 20 count. As I have to remind people, it's not 10. They got twice as long. And there's a DDT. This 
could be it. One, two, and only a two count. Carry Awful hanging in there. And now a roll up. Two, got him. And Robert Leach feels awful having to announce that. But regardless, Kerry Awful goes to the final. He will face Camaro Jackson for the Ryan Buckley Memorial Tournament Cup. But we will not see that match next week. We will see a match between Rip Mystic versus Tom Arson from Floyd Pro Wrestling in 2013 as we honor the Central Illinois Pro Wrestling Hall of Famers. That's next week here on PWCI as Mario Cravello claims his tights were pulled, but too bad he's out of here. Head back to Wisconsin where you can Freely wrestle without restrictions as there's no indoor gathering ban up there. Till next time, this is Matt Conservative Crime Fire. Thank you for watching PWCI this week presents The Crime.